Greetings and good Monday morning, the 22nd of May, 2023, third decade of the 21st century. Couple things. It's already the 22nd of May, 2023. I mean, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but I feel like I feel like we just turned 2023. Uh, uh, I got a daughter graduating in a couple of weeks. That I don't know why that makes me feel old. Like everything else is fine. I feel old when like I, I say that I've got a child graduating. Like like I have to wrap my head around the fact that I'm old enough to have a child graduating high school, and yet. What's so funny about that is I actually have friends that got started a little earlier than me that now have grandkids at, at our same age. Anyways, but it is also still the third decade of the 21st century, and if you're new to my channel, I always open with that to sort of highlight the fact that some very smart individuals had predicted where we would be as a society, as, as a global society, as a, a race of being, so to speak. And I always highlight that fact based on where we actually are and what we're currently dealing with and what issues and whatnot. Um, the other thing I like to do is if you leave a comment, I will read, react, and respond. And I put out two videos last week. Yeah. And I got two responses from the usual suspect. And I'm going to go ahead and take the time to read and re react and respond. First out of the gate, Stace Catalan. Uh, responding to my nerdy geeky stuff the Winchesters are getting shopped around to other stations what's wacky is that Fox is keeping 911 Lone Star which I watch for laughs since it's supposed to be set in Austin but canceled 911 which is now moving to ABC CBS cannot make up its mind as it canceled SWAT but then renewed it I could see AMC or AMC Plus getting into the Winchesters to try to complement their other supernatural type shows such as Interview with a Vampire and the Mayfair Witches, although the channel is still spinning shows off The Walking Dead. I watched a little bit of Walker, but the shows the shows seemed the show seemed to pace so slowly that it bored me. Okay, I get that. I wish Jared would do something in a different direction to push his acting chops. I became, uh, I became a fan of Stephen Amell more after getting into Heels than from Arrow, and it's a nice change for the character. His character is a good guy off the map, but plays the heel in the ring. There are some things that shouldn't go in... Okay. Uh, and then, there are some things that shouldn't go on or be remade, etc. There are movies like Highlander, Big Trouble in Little China, etc. that are called classics that shouldn't be remade. Cons are the way to make their money, but also the con, pun intended, is that there, beco there, there becomes typecasting. Not everyone can be a jack-of-all-trades like Alan Tudyk, who can do practically anything. Not everyone can make it like Zendaya. Look at Bella Thorne, for example. Yeah, she still works, but not the the type of roles that Z gets, and Bella still keeps up with her OnlyFans, etc. So, a few things to unpack there, uh, especially if you're not tracking, you'd more than likely have to watch the video, which is kind of a shameless plug, if you will. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy how networks are canceling shows, and, you know, again... Sometimes I like to have trust, faith, and confidence that there are people, smart people, trying to make smart decisions based on information some of us don't have. Um, you know, like, my, my biggest and greatest example is Firefly. Firefly is a cult classic. I was not aware of it when it was on the air. So, I, I don't know if I fall into this weird group of people, but I was not aware of it when it was on the air. I was not anybody supporting it when it was on the air because I just wasn't aware of it. At that time in my life, I was really into wrestling and uh, Smallville. That that was really about it. Uh, I don't think there was much else I was that terribly interested in. Um, I stumbled onto Firefly uh, later. Um, I always loved telling that story. Uh, I was aware of Serenity. 
I was aware of the movie because of Nathan Fillion, and I knew Nathan Fillion from Two Guys, A Girl, and A Pizza Place. I was watching the special features after I got off a of patrol in Ramadi. I'd watched Serenity, and I, as I do, I love watching special features, and that's where I got introduced to Firefly. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't understand the rhyme or reason on why certain things happen. Um, as it pertains to the Winchesters, which is what some of that conversation is about. So, Supernatural was on for 15 seasons and would have kept going if the three main actors wanted to keep going. But they didn't. The CW, I, I don't know what their issue is, but it seems like once they have something that's good, as of lately, they get rid of it. The fact that the CW brought back Supernatural in any incarnation, like the Winchester's prequel in a different universe, I think meant a lot to a bunch of us. But then you take Walker. I, My wife and I gravitated to Walker because of Jared. We didn't like it. Walker even got a spin-off. Now that spin-off is cancelled. And from what I heard, the spin-off was so much better because it, it wasn't anything to do necessarily with the Walker Texas Ranger franchise and you have to understand it depending on your age I never watched it growing up but I was well aware of Chuck Norris I knew who Chuck Norris was I knew he had the television show Walker Texas Ranger you can't just bring back Walker Texas Ranger e even if you leave out some adjectives or if you leave out some titles you can't bring back the brand and not stay on brand so when they did the spin-off, the spin-off was kind of its own brand by itself, and I heard it was doing a lot better. And they canceled that, but they're keeping Walker. I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, Stephen Amell, I'm looking forward to seeing him back at GalaxyCon this year. I have not been able to watch uh, Heels yet. It's just... I don't know how to phrase this, but it's like... Everything's going to streaming... And you'll have to spend like eight or nine hundred dollars a month to have access to all the streaming networks, and it's like you can't. And unfortunately, where I live, we don't have um, we don't have like that Verizon, T-Mobile, whatever. We don't have any other internet than Spectrum. So we would have to cancel our cable and just go with internet alone which still costs quite a bit of money so yeah we don't get to stream a whole lot um as far as certain people uh gravitating or um not gravitating uh certain people um moving on and typecasting uh if you're not familiar i was talking about how some people uh caught fire on a short-lived series uh, and and you know we're kind of like a flash in the pan success and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to belittle anybody you know it, it just happens right and unfortunately I the the industry has this horrific sense of typecasting where if you did really really well as a certain type of character well then the theory is you're only really good at that type of character so unfortunately a lot of actors and actresses you know their careers didn't go anywhere after that short-lived hit they were on went away um, and I'm not really sure how I got onto that topic but uh, I know oh oh yeah 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 so Morena Bakarin was talking uh, on to uh, was talking to Michael Rosenbaum on the inside of you uh, podcast about how she's not holding a candle for Firefly and I don't know that any of the other cast members are I think the other cast members are all trying to move forward and whatnot um, because at this time, I mean, it's the last episode aired early 2003, which was now 20 years ago. <sighs> so I get it. I get it. And plus, she has since then moved on to do some much bigger things. Uh, her career has exploded. Um, but uh, in that vein of conversation, I, as I, Stace, I'm pretty sure that's what you're talking about how certain actors and actresses hold a candle for what once what, what once was. Or now, like, they're only relegated to cons. And, you know, it's funny, I'm not trying to go in a completely different direction, 
But Charisma Carpenter hasn't done a whole lot since uh, Buffy and Angel. And and that's a damn shame. I, Aside from being just gorgeous and terribly nice to look at, um, I didn't think she was a bad actress, at least... I mean, I didn't think she was a bad actress. I don't... I have no idea. I understand she had a a bad relationship or a bad experience with Joss Whedon, who also put her on the map. And I'm just, I'm just being open and honest. You know, it's kind of like the biting the hand that feeds you, right? Uh, you know, it, if it wasn't for Joss Whedon, Charisma Carpenter wouldn't have done... Uh, what was it, all six or seven seasons of Buffy, or however many seasons, and she wouldn't have done uh, four or five seasons of Angel. I mean, whatever. But she even made mention to the fact that she hasn't been working a lot, so she she goes to conventions, and that's where she makes a lot of her money, is the conventions. And how she had struggled with talking about her experience because she didn't want to alienate a lot of her fans that are fans of Joss Whedon, but I digress. You know, it kind of goes back to that whole thing. And like you were saying, yeah, not everybody's like Nathan Fillion who was able to move on. Not everybody's, you know, as multifaceted as Alan Tudyk. Um, you know, I, I think young actors like you were talking about with Zendaya and um, Bella Thorne, you know, some of them have a hard time growing up in front of the camera. I think in the case of Bella Thorne, her, I, I, this is just my guesstimation. Her big thing was growing up in front of the camera, all wholesome and, you know, white picket fence, Norman Rockwell, uh, you know, just so on and so forth. It's the atypical Alyssa Milano, Drew Barrymore thing, where it's like, you know, she becomes a woman, and you know, she's extremely well proportioned and attractive for her age and is like, look, I'm more than just that. I'm sexy. Nah. But there's more. There's more. What do you got? So this is in response to my other video. Uh, there are people who say couples get to know each other on road trips, but I think they also get to know... I think you also get to know your partner through the grieving process. Yeah... Um, I'll tell you, when we lost our son, we went through some hard times, um, but it, it, it wasn't what I would call because of us. Um, I had just retired from the service, so I had just, I had just left the only way of life I'd known for 20 plus years, the only means to which I supported myself and my family for the last 20 years, and I was give, giving up all of that security and all of that guarantee, uh, you know, all those guarantees and just the comfort of what I knew. And I was very fortunate to, to secure a job before I retired. At the time, I didn't think it paid well, but come to find out, it actually did. Um, losing our child was a tragedy, and I, I don't think I need to overstate that, but attempting to deal with it was difficult. Um, the, the only good way I know how to explain it is for that moment in time, we just needed the world to stop. You know, and, and, and give us an opportunity to catch our breath and give us an opportunity to catch up. Like we, like, we needed to hit pause on life so that we could wrap our heads around what just happened. Because what we learned the hard way was that, and me especially, and this is in no way, shape, or form um, a ding against my wife. She was, she was a stay-at-home mom at the time because of our son, so we didn't deal with the same things. I still had to go to work. I still had to earn a living. I still had to, you know, provide. And I'm I'm dealing with and I'm coping with or at least I'm trying to cope with this this tragedy. So that was a bit difficult for the both of us. 
she also had access to more people who had more time to talk to her, to help her. I did not. I had friends that wanted to be there. I had friends that I had or have friends that you know they, they wanted to offer support, but either they didn't know how or they didn't understand how or it, they didn't comprehend that maybe I needed them more than they knew. And they were all busy, you know, and, and I'm not picking on them. I'm not criticizing them. They just, they were all busy. And I, I found myself isolated and alone. I would go to work where people were empathetic, but truly didn't care. You know, they, they, the, the truth is they just didn't care. You know, they, they felt bad as I think is the normal social decency, but they just didn't care. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, they wanted to do what they had to do in order to keep their job and get paid. And I, I can respect that. Um, but other than that, the whole concept of divorce and all that just was never even really a thing. It just, I, I think at the worst of it, maybe I felt a little isolation and jealousy. Uh, but divorce never crossed our mind. Which is funny because in all actuality, if my wife wanted to, she could have blamed me since this whole time I've had the genetic mutation that ultimately caused our son's problems. But you never know. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I am over 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to gather my thoughts and then I'll probably make one quick video, maybe... I don't know, I'll have to see what's going on, whether it's going to be socially, socially, socio-political or geeky and nerdy. But if you're not familiar with my channel, I don't care about the likes, the subscriptions. I know it's better for YouTube and Rumble, but all I really care about is creating conversation. So if you want, leave a comment. And if you do leave a comment, I greatly appreciate it. I promise I will read, react, and respond to it. And if you do, you're awesome. Till next time, stay safe out there.